When I first had my conversion experience, the Holy Spirit played a big role in my life because it was on the heels of the big Kansas City uh, Catholic Charismatic uh, Conference at Arrowhead Stadium. Uh, my first taste of what I would call serious Catholics who love scripture and love to worship the Lord was a charismatic group. And so when I joined them, I was introduced third person of the Trinity. And, uh, and that was new experience for me because I had grown up just basically thinking of God as God and Jesus was Jesus, but uh, I never thought about the Holy Spirit as being a person. And so for the first time in my life at 18 years of age, people started talking about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit spoke to them or they were being led by the Holy Spirit. And the, the problem that I had was distinguishing between my own thoughts and what was the Holy Spirit. And if I'm just having a thought, is that the Holy Spirit? I didn't know. So we would step out on it. If it worked out well, it was. And if it didn't, it was me. <laughs> okay. So uh, I think at the very beginning, at a young, at a young age, I, I, I thought of the Holy Spirit, but not the same as Jesus and the Father. More of a thing. And it was evidenced by the language that we would use. And that was, did you receive the Holy Spirit? And we'd talk about the Holy Spirit, not him not a person of the Holy Spirit. So it was more of a utilitarian relationship at that point, a way for God the Father or Jesus the Son to speak to me or to lead me, but I really didn't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit at that point. As I grew in my faith in the independent churches, uh, we would uh, spend a considerable amount of time in prayer. And the key to our prayer was to be in tune with the Holy Spirit, to ask the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in our church, to show us God's will, open doors for us and opportunities to advance the kingdom and allow Jesus' name to be, to be glorified. And so the Holy Spirit to us was uh, a power that would further the work of, of, of Jesus and lead us and guide us. And if we could all agree on something in our prayer meetings, we really felt that the Holy Spirit was, was, was bringing us together. But I also think that we had a real sense back then of the power of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit could do amazing things. And I've got to say that, that that's one of, the, one of the areas that in some ways I missed after I came to the Catholic Church, came into the Catholic Church, was this sense of, of wonder and awe that the Holy Spirit could do anything and lead us somewhere. You know, a leaf, a leaf blows across the road south. God's called us to Mexico, you know? And so we would look at everything as the, the Spirit uh, speaking to us and, and giving us power over evil, power over adversities in our life and the strength to do things that, that Jesus called us to do. But again, it was more of a utilitarian relationship, not so much a personal relationship uh, with the Holy Spirit. You, you wouldn't hear people say things like, did you have a good time in prayer with the Holy Spirit today? Uh, well, the Holy Spirit, unfortunately, at an immature state, that at least I was, was more of a, uh, uh, um, someone who, who did the things that I thought should be done in the kingdom of God rather than someone who is drawing me to Christ and, and helping me to become formed to Christ. I would say that, the, that my view of the Holy Spirit has, has changed from the days where I was an uh, independent pastor to coming into the church. Uh, when I was an independent pastor in my days as a, as a young Protestant, uh, I would equate the move of the Holy Spirit very much with my emotion in that if I was emotional, if I was moved uh, deeply, that was a sign that the Holy Spirit was uh, somehow working uh, in my life. After coming into the Catholic Church, I've really come to realize that oftentimes the work of the Holy Spirit in my life is not so much an emotional thing that I can detect, but it's something that is moving in my heart and changing me. It's drawing me closer to Christ, a, a sense of uh, conviction in, in the area of sin. But also, uh, I, I think that after becoming Catholic, my understanding of the Holy Spirit has matured greatly, particularly between baptism, the work of baptism, uh, 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 the forgiveness of my sins, being joined to the church, receiving the theological virtues of faith, hope, and charity, and the Holy Spirit, but then the new Pentecost, a confirmation. And the confirmation for me was more of a, a one-step uh, process to becoming an adult in the church. And it was something that I, I really didn't understand, but it was a rite of passage. But now that I understand what, what confirmation is, it has changed my view of the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit is not so much 
uh, someone who is carrying out my wishes in the kingdom or empowering me, but the Holy Spirit is empowering me to do the work that Christ has called me to do, to be, as the Catechism says, a courageous and authentic witness of Jesus. And so the Holy Spirit has been given to me for a purpose, and that is the purpose of the kingdom of God, and uh, to be sensitive to the, the, the voice of, of the Spirit out in public, whether it's a, a coffee shop or I'm at uh, Walmart or I'm with extended family, to be sensitive to the nudgings of the, of the Spirit, the, the, um, the opportunities that the Holy Spirit is giving me to do the work of, of Jesus. I think that the biggest difference between my early days as a charismatic pastor and now is that the Holy Spirit back then did more of my bidding and the Holy Spirit today does Jesus' bidding and, and I need to become uh, agreeable with that and, and step out in faith and obey.